Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been ages, I know, and I'm so sorry. But I'm back with a new video and today I'm showing you guys how I do this makeup look. Um, I posted a picture of this on Instagram and you guys really wanted to see a tutorial on it. So I filmed it for you guys. Hopefully this video isn't up too late. I also showed you guys how I style my hair with um, a straightener, like how I curl it kind of. It's more like waves really and add a little bit more volume because my hair is really thin and fine and it's quite long so it gets weighed down quite a lot but hopefully this video helps you guys out let me know if you guys want to see any other videos i will be getting a haircut so i can't film any more long hair tutorials but maybe short hair ones who knows ah! um but yeah hope you guys enjoy watching right guys don't mind my hair i will show you guys how i curl my hair i wasn't actually gonna do that in this video but i thought I'm gonna get my hair cut tomorrow. I thought this is the only day I can show you guys how I curl my hair while it's this length. It's down to my waist right now. And I'm gonna get it cut up to my collarbone. Oh, I'm so nervous. I, I was really excited to begin with, but now I'm just really nervous. So anyway, I'm starting off with my Fenty foundation in 240. I've already used like half of this. That's crazy. But I love this foundation so much and I've been wearing it a lot because of my sister's wedding and everything. I haven't worn Too Faced Born This Way in a while actually, which is really weird because it's my favourite foundation. But taking about, I don't know how many pumps that was, two or three pumps of this. And I've got a lot of blemishes to cover up. It's so weird how I break out. Like, I'll be having such a good skin like month and I'll just break out and it's not like mother nature this time it's just I don't know too much chocolate I guess so for this look I used a lot of foundation the reason for that was because I've just been doing light makeup for a while and I just wanted to really glam up I just miss doing my makeup all like full on and you guys seem to love it which is why I'm now doing this tutorial so thank you so much for all of the love sometimes also what I do is if I need extra coverage in a certain area so say this blemish here what I'll do is I'll just put like quite a bit of foundation on there and I'll just leave it there for like five minutes that way what happens is the foundation gets a little bit drier and it leaves the pigmentation there and then all I do is just blend it out with my beauty blender and it just it gives such good coverage and it's good because then you don't have to use a concealer which might not match your foundation exactly. I really like just using my foundation to cover up redness and scarring rather than a concealer. I think I might need to zoom you guys in actually. I haven't filmed a tutorial in so long so please forgive me if any part of this video has bad lighting or is out of focus. So I'm taking Tarte Shape Tape now which is running really low this is the one in light medium does anyone else feel like their makeup just changes color over time i feel like no matter what makeup i use whether it's foundation or concealer no matter what brand it is it always changes color towards the end it will be like a whole shade darker than what it was when i got it brand new anyway i'm blending this in with my beauty blender I always use my concealer as my primer for my eyeshadow. The Fenty foundation, I love it so much, but recently I've been finding it really drying, like really, really drying. So what I've been doing is mixing it with um, the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Champagne Pop. And that gives me like the luminosity but Fenty still gives me a really good coverage so I really recommend that to use with it if anyone's struggling with how dry Fenty is but it's, it's good because it's really matte so I don't know I have days where I really love Fenty and some days where I just think it makes my skin look really dry now I'm using the Tarte Shape Tape concealer again but this time in a lighter color this is light sand if you guys have been watching my videos for a while you'll know that i always use two concealers one 
that matches my skin colour and that I feel like corrects my under eyes and then I go in and use a lighter one to brighten and the reason I do that is because if I just use a light one I feel like it just makes my under eyes look grey because there's no like correction underneath like imagine just putting a light foundation all over your face like it's gonna look grey but I guess like for most people it works and they don't have to use two concealers also, I don't find this to be too heavy for some reason. I don't know why, like, I'm, I'm fine with, like, a lot of product under my eyes. I'm still not done yet, so. Okay, I'm gonna blend this spot out now. Look, can you see that it's just covered it up completely? And just with my beauty blender, I'm just gonna dab it, and I usually just try and go around it. To set my under eyes, I'm using the Kat Von D Translucent Powder. I quite like this, actually. I really like small powders because I travel to Huddersfield quite a bit and just for like packing and stuff it's just so easy to travel with. Okay next I'm using my sleek contour kit. I'm going into this shade in the middle. This is a little bit darker than what I would usually use. Oh should I zoom you guys in? Oh my god this is all out of focus. I'm so sorry if that was all out of focus. But if it was, all I did was blend in my contour. I used this shade right here and I buffed that in with my beauty blender. But moving on to my eyes. I'm gonna start with my brows actually because I feel like that just helps give me a better guide. So I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz. This is in the shade Medium Brown. I feel like Medium Brown is the best for me because I don't like my brows to be really stark and really dark so medium browns a good shade I use a very light hand with this product because if you don't it can look very very drawn in so the arch of my brow is quite sparse so I do really concentrate on that area I'm setting my brows in place with the Anastasia Clear Brow Gel. Now moving on to the fun part which is the eyeliner. I'm starting off with the Tattoo Liner by Kat Von D and I'm going to line my lash line with this and create a little bit of a wing as well. Actually not a little bit, quite a little bit. <laughs> I'm not going too thick with this eyeliner either because we are going to be using black eyeshadow to smoke it out which will make it thicker as well. And I've deliberately left this powder under my eyes because we are probably going to have some fallout. So I might as well just leave it and clean it up at the end. Okay, so that's the kind of shape we're going to stick to with the liquid liner. And in the inner corner, I created a tiny, teeny, tiny point so I'm just going to do the same. I find that this really changes my eye shape. It makes them really like almondy. Moving on to the eyeshadow and smoking it all out. I'm using Corrupt from Makeup Geek. And I actually did this with a angled brush. So this is the 317 from Zoeva. I'm going to go over the eyeliner with the eyeshadow. And you don't have to be too neat with this because it's obviously going to be smoked out. And I don't actually take the eyeshadow too far in. I stop around here and then I slowly start to go a little bit above the line. But only when there's less product on the brush. You don't want to go on top of the line like the one you did with the eyeliner with a lot of black eyeshadow on this brush because that's just going to make a thicker eyeshadow so what you want to do is just go over the top part when you've got less product on the brush start to smudge it out with the brush and then I take a flat brush there's not much product on this brush there's like a tiny bit of black eyeshadow from before which is fine I'm just gonna smudge this even more it's better if you just use like a really clean brush for this part and see if you just tap on top it will blend it all out for you 
you really don't have to do much. And then uh, it's just a case of going back in with the angled brush and then back in with that brush, building up the intensity and smudging it out again. Um, usually what happens is, you can probably see over here, it's like really smoky and then there's that line. So to make sure that that's more cohesive, I'm going to just use eyeshadow to connect both parts and there we have it. You'll want to keep going in and building up the intensity close to the lash line. Don't go higher than the line that we did already because the smudging is going to sort of take it higher anyway. I'm going to do the next eye and then I'll be right back. So now I'm getting rid of the powder under my eyes. I'm going to use a waterline eyeliner. This is Dark Side by Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is probably my favourite one and I'm using a lot of this. I'm not using a light hand with this. Really intensifies the look so much, I love it. And then on the top, I'm just lifting my lashes up and going in the waterline. For the lower lash line, I actually like to use a brown eyeshadow to help smoke it out. I'm using Latte by Makeup Geek on a 228 brush by Zoeva. It makes it look a lot more soft. And Latte is a good colour because it's, it's quite cool toned, it's not too warm. It adds to the smokiness I feel. And now we're going to use the same angled brush and I'm going to use some more black eyeshadow and this is going really close to the lash line. I am smudging this out as well. And I'm more so kind of blending it in with the brown and I'm just connecting the outer corner to the top. So that's all blended out and now it's time to move on to the lashes. I'm curling my lashes and then applying waterproof mascara. This is Too Faced Better Than Sex. And then I'm gonna pop some lashes on. They're from Pinky Goat. Sorry, I took them out of the box. But this is the packaging. They're in the style Amani. I think that's how you say it, I'm not sure. This is what they look like. So they're really flared out towards the outer corners. And they're kind of PC as well, but not too PC. By PC, I mean they've got like chunks. I really like how they look. I don't usually go for lashes that are really winged out towards the edge because I don't feel like it suits my eye shape. But this eye look is really catty and elongated, so I went with these lashes. So I'm going to pop these on off screen and I'll be right back. Okay, so the lashes are on. Um, the glue's still drying and when it's dry, I usually just go over it with like a little bit of black eyeshadow just to make sure that it's not showing. But moving on to the rest of my face now. For the blusher, I'm using Rose de Aura by Milani. I love this blusher because it's got such a nice luminosity and it's like peachy and it's not too pink. So it's really nice. I'm using this on a powder brush from Look Good Feel Better from Feel Unique. It's really nice for a glowy blusher and then for my highlighter what i actually did was i used the champagne pop um liquid on a beauty blender and actually no that's a lie i put it on the back of my hand just got a little bit on my finger and dabbed it onto the high points of my face and this just adds a nice subtle glow and it's nice to use this on areas where you want glow but you don't want to go like really crazy with a highlighter like this bit here. I don't add too much highlighter on top of this. And then I blend that out with my beauty blender. And then for highlighter I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills So Hollywood Illuminator on a Morphe M510 brush. I'm mostly concentrating this on my cheekbones and not so much everywhere else. Also with this bit I like to do a bit of a C so that it's all like connecting nicely. I really like to do this bit now since Dreaming Dahlia did it on my sister on her wedding day. It just looks so cute and it brightens up your whole face because it's like in the middle of your face. For my lips I used the Kiko Lip Liner in 300 because I wanted it to be nude but I wanted the, my lips to still be quite defined. This is a good one for my complexion. And then for my lipstick I used uh, Urban Decay Stark Naked. This is my favourite matte nude. 
and I just blend that in with the lip liner and then to finish off I used a ton of the Charlotte Tilbury Collagen Lip Bath. This is basically a nude gloss, but it's got like a pinky golden iridescence. So that's the makeup complete. The last bit is to set the makeup with some setting spray. This is Scandinavia Finishing Spray. I like to spray a lot of sprays at the end of my makeup because I feel like it really makes my foundation look like skin and everything melts in together nicely so that's my face done and now I'm going to move on to my hair my favorite method of curling it right now is with my straightener this is the GHD max styler I've just blow dried my hair which, and I did it upside down, which is why it's got a bit more volume than it usually does. My hair is long and straight and it's thin and fine, which is why I'm getting a haircut. I'm going to show you guys how I achieve a bit more volume in my hair. So I'm just parting off the top half of my hair. That's actually a lie. My favourite way of um, curling my hair is with rollers but I tried it recently and it just didn't work for me. I don't know why. I think my hair was a little bit too wet for um, the, the rollers to do their job. So what I do before straightening or curling my hair is using the Way Memory Mist. This has been a godsend for me. Honestly, my hair doesn't hold a curl. I'll spray it with the most freeze hold hairspray there is and it still won't hold a curl. My hair will go like crispy and dry but it won't hold a curl. And this does the job, I don't know how, but Jen Atkin is a bloody genius. It's also a heat protectant which is really good. I take a section about this wide and just brush it through and then I start curling it kind of towards the top of my hair so I'll do a half turn here and then when I get to the bottom I'll do like a full turn and then curl upwards and I go quite high with this because my hair is really long so yeah just hold it for a few seconds and then release and that's the kind of curl my straightener gives. It's quite a loose wave, which I like. The reason I get a loose wave with a straightener is because of the thickness of these. If you do it with a thinner straightener, obviously you'd get a much tighter curl. I make sure all of my hair is inside the curler. A lot of people leave the ends out, which is also a whole look. But I like to make sure all of my hair is in. The curler. I'll probably leave the ends out when I have shorter hair because it looks cool on short hair to do that and yeah so I basically just do this all throughout the bottom half of my head and then I do the same to the mid section of my hair and then again with this front piece I'm going outwards away from my hair I mean away from my face not away from my hair. guys I don't think I'm cut out for hair tutorials and there we go so that's the bottom half done okay with the top section this part so the back of my hair I like to do backwards so I lift the straightener up from the roots and that will make sure I have a lot of volume at my roots I'm going to try really hard to show you guys even though I can't see myself I really hate that they've not put a cool tip on these straighteners they just want you to buy all the curlers because my sister's has a cool tip which is for like basically curling your hair and on this one you, the only way you can do that is by burning yourself so there we go you can see that it's lifted on, on the crown of my head which is helpful because I don't have much volume so this section I'm gonna do towards my face because it's quite nice to not have them all going in one direction 
and to have them alternate. Okay, and then this one is gonna go away from my face. Now this one, because it is actually quite close to my face, it's this section here, I'm gonna go outwards with this one. And if you want a tighter curl, hold the curler more like, tightly. If you want a looser curl, you can like relax the curler a little bit. But I'm going for tighter curls because um, for the millionth time, my hair doesn't hold a curl, so. This bit I'm gonna do lift and curl. Okay, that's all basically done. To make sure I have volume in my hair, I add some texturizing spray. So I'm going to take this section, and this is the L'Oreal Outrageous Texture Spray. And this is going in the back of my hair. That just adds a bit of fullness back into my hair. And you can tease a little bit if you want to. I usually do, but I've been teasing a lot recently. and. I think it's kind of damaging so I'm not gonna do that but I am gonna go back in and fix this bit right here because there's a kink in my hair because of how I dried it. I would usually spray my hair but the memory mist keeps my curl. I don't really like having hairspray in my hair, it just makes my hair too like, I don't, I don't like the texture. So yeah, that's my hair done, and I'm just gonna go change. I also forgot to mention actually, instead of using this spray, you can use um, texturizing powder, which is really good. I don't have any on me, but I've used it previously, and I really, really like how it like zhuzhes up your hair, and you don't need much of it, and I really recommend those kinds of powders. They like come in tiny little packages. And that's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Let me know if you tried this look out. I would love to know if anyone tries it out. I know some of you guys have tried it out on Instagram. So tag me in your pictures. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!